A mere few days ago, I read the terrifying testimony coming out of the law courts. It was an account of cold, callous and calculated murder that filled me with rage and revulsion. As I struggled with the horrors of what I was reading, I vowed that I would not let the events described by that self-confessed murdering scum sully the memories I cherish of Daphne Caruana Galizia, a unique and extraordinary woman. And many of those memories came flooding back as a kind of bomb in the storm of those myriad emotions. So forgive me if this speech is a tad personal. For me, as for many of you, Daphne wasn't merely the woman with a laptop. Her work was always an inspiration to me, from the moment she stepped into Malta's journalistic landscape with her groundbreaking column in the Sunday Times all those years ago, up to that fateful moment on 16th October 2017. I was, and remain, forever in awe of her inspiring, intelligent and incisive reporting. The full gamut of it from her inordinate ability to sniff out and break stories concerning those in the highest echelons of power and her incredible knowledge of international affairs, to her impressive and oftentimes droll storytelling prowess, and of course, her faultless command of the English language. I confess I sometimes catch myself using expressions I know she hated, like referring to children as kids, or punctuating some sentences with those dreaded ellipses, or using excessive exclamation marks and smileys. Oops. Although I wasn't a close friend of Daphne's, we knew each other well enough to indulge in extended chats whenever we met. Time spent with her was never time wasted. The conversation would flow from politics to food to literature, from the serious to the mundane to the ridiculous. In those two few interactions with Daphne, it's the little things I keep close to my heart, however. The times she generously offered me some space on her magazines to promote literary or cultural projects I was working on. And on one occasion, on running commentary, she mentioned a pasta dish which sounded really tasty, and I commented about it. Within minutes, the recipe was in my inbox. I recall I once met Daphne and her sister Corinne at the cinema. We were watching the wonderful Indian movie, The Lunchbox, and we went for a coffee afterwards. Unsurprisingly, Daphne loved it. It's a splendid story told against the backdrop of Indian food and culture, topics that I imagine piqued her impeccable taste and incomparable flair, and her love of all things beautiful. This is the woman I care to remember with profound fondness, not the abstract person described with so little feeling by the witness. Daphne was truly inspirational, a kind, generous, funny, fierce and brave soul. The side of her that so few of her detractors can't or refuse to recognise. The woman who hated the uglification of Malta, uglification both physical and moral, and who used her pen so effectively in the fight against it. The other day, Daphne's middle son Andrew tweeted this. I wish my mother could see the unstoppable courage she has inspired in the women of Occupy Justice. My fellow OJ activists and I were moved beyond words by that comment. I almost wrote humbled, but I believe it's another word Daphne disliked. In reply, I can only say that that courage is a mere spark compared to the flame of, of the unstoppable courage Daphne displayed throughout her life. Daphne inspires me, us, because despite the unrelenting abuse, harassment and threats she constantly faced, she kept at it night and day, year after year, because she could not tolerate injustice. In fact, on the 3rd March 2013, Daphne wrote, I cannot bear the thought of injustice, still less the reality of it. It's true that life is unfair and that much of it can't be helped, but where I can do anything to avoid unfairness or set it straight, then I will. And she did. We have gladly picked up that baton. And if it took a cabal of men to stop her, it will take the army of activists, women and men of decency and goodwill, and of strength and stamina, all inspired by Daphne, 
to ensure that each and every single one of those involved in this evil conspiracy of murder and corruption ends up behind bars, where they belong for the rest of their wretched lives. Only then can Malta realize its full potential and become the country Daphne hoped so much it could be. Thank you.